back with James Him Mitchell and Life Plan Intuitive Coaching. And we were talking about money. And in this culture, it's a big thing. And how we feel about ourselves and how we feel about life is often reflected in how we feel about money. So can we talk about this a little bit more, kind of the things that you're seeing, trends of clients coming to you and how they view their relationship to money? Sure. Um, a lot of money beliefs or money stories that I have come in contact with through people yeah. is, um, you know, it comes across like, I don't deserve it. I'm not good enough. You know, um, I don't have any self-value, you know, because money is a value system. So sometimes that's directly proportionate to the value that the person brings to themselves or has about themselves. So it's usually a matter of getting to the core, you know, of what's really going on. Like I said, everything about coaching is it's an inner process, it's a self-discovery process. So, you know, a person can come to me wanting to look at their business, but we start from the inside out rather than from the outside in. Sure. You know, because whatever's going on in the inside is going to affect whatever's going on in the outside. So, you know, usually I always want to get to the core, like what's really going on there? You know, what's really that belief about? And then, you know, the person, it took all this time to learn that depending on, you know, their level of maturity in this world, how many years they've been here. So, you know, it's not going to happen in one session where we unlearn it, but it's a process of unlearning it, you know. Um, So it takes time, but it's a matter of getting to what the root of the story is and why the person's continuing to hold on to it. That's the most important piece because they get a benefit out of telling that story again and again to themselves. So what are some of the benefits you've seen without doing it, zeroing in on one person? Right, well, some of the benefits I've, I've examined have been like holding on to your position, you know, um, you get to be right, you know, um, this is a big one, um, victim, being the victim uh-huh. in things. I get a lot of people who want to play the role of the victim. And so right. that, ma- that mirrors all their ex- external circumstances. Right. And so here's the thing too, you know, if you spend a lot of time identifying yourself in that way without, whether you do it consciously or unconsciously. Yeah. Most of that bet is unconscious. Yeah. A lot of it is unconscious, yeah. but a lot of people have the idea of, well, if I no longer am that, then who am I? Then they move into a space of not being sure who they are. And so that becomes a whole nother thing. So sometimes that's another reason why they hold on to it. They played that role for so long, they can't identify themselves as doing anything else. Right. And so what kinds of things do you get them to do? Do you give them exercises? Do you, what do you do? Yeah. uh, The coaching process is um, based on whatever it is that they want to work on or establish or create in terms of a goal, there is always something I give them to do. And I kind of tailor it to whatever it is the individual wants to establish. Like for instance, um, if they come to me and they want to start their own business, first we have to become clear on what the vision of the business is. Um, I ask them why now? I always ask what the burning why is because there's power in wanting to know why somebody wants to do something. Um, so we get to the why, and I ask that. And then if it's a, a business thing, then I ask, well, um, tell me what your life would be like once you've accomplished this goal. Sure. So we kind of do, it's like a, almost like a, a guided visualization. Yeah, like right? traveling into the right. future. Right, so we go that. into the future, and I say, all the concerns that you have about this process are, are no longer a concern. You have, you have created the business that you've wanted. Tell me what your life looks like as a result of that. How has your life improved or different right. or made better having achieved this goal? So I, I And I kind of listen to see what other aspects of their life that they tell me through that because work is only one part of their life. I want to hear what their full life is going to be sure, like. Sure, sure. You know, so we look at that and then I say, okay, so this is where we're at. Once we establish that, say this is where we're at, what would we need to do to kind of bring you from where you're at now to where you see yourself being? And then I kind of pay attention to what I've heard because what I'll do is I'll repeat what I heard to them. I said, well, I heard this. So is this really a part of this? Like, for instance, I'd say, well, tell me what your working environment is like, you know. And sometimes the person may may tell me they're working by themselves. They may see themselves running an office with a secretary and this and that. So I pay attention to that because they're telling me they want to um, be in a supervisory position. Right. So I pay attention to that, whereas a person who's working by themselves, they want to be a solopreneur and they want to do everything as much as they can by themselves. Sure. So, you know, you make the distinction because they may not be clear of the distinction. You know, so I said, well, I heard this and I heard that. Um, and then I say, well, what would be the challenges that would come up as a result of you moving into this space? But we also have to be clear. We're talking about entrepreneurs. Sure. Not everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. So we kind of have to separate the distinction of, well, 
do you want to be an employee or do you want to be an entrepreneur? Because right. those are two different Very things. Different. You know, so I ask him this question. This is how I make the, the distinction. What's more important to you? Is, is a sense of security more important to you or is a sense of having a sense of freedom? Because I've found that most people who want to be employees are tied to security. Yep. And most people who want to be entrepreneurs are tied to a sense of, I want my freedom. Absolutely. I want to be in control. And I was like that. You know, when I was an employee, one of the things I really, really found myself challenged with was the idea of having to um, have my decision second guessed <laughs> and <Hey>. having <laughs> to have my, my decision making ability questioned. And I realized that the person who was doing the questioning, that was their job. Their sure. job was because they were in a position of, in authority above me. So they were supposed to be asking me this, but I always was kind of rubbed a little bit the wrong way with sure, that. Sure. So I said, you know, and this is what I know to be true. And I help people look at their previous working experiences because there's elements in that as well that would play a part in what it is that they're going to be doing um, in the future. So I took that into account. I, that was one of the things that I didn't knew that I was going to be an entrepreneur because I wanted to be the boss. I didn't want to have anybody else second guessing me or Absolutely. or questioning my decision making ability. So that was so I pay attention to what's my personality like, yeah. and that's what I ask people: What's your personality like? Let's look at that, you know. But the main question with entrepreneurship is like, um, are you? Do you want a sense of freedom? Do you want a sense of being in control? How much risk are you willing to take? Because you, on some level, you have to be somewhat of a risk taker. You know, not everybody can be that or wants to, to have a lot of risk involved in what it is that they do. You know, so and but the other question becomes is like, what changes are you willing to make? That's a key question because some yeah. people realize that they need to make changes, but they may be in a space where they're not willing to do that. Yeah, you and know, and the language is saying I can't, and they get, oh, well, is it is it really that you can't or that you won't? Yeah, because those are two different things. Yeah, because there isn't too much that you can't do. Right, exactly. I mean, can't means that you're not capable of doing it. Won't means that you are capable, but you're right. holding on to something and saying that I'm unwilling to do that. Yeah. So that's an important. So we, I, I always want to know what, what, why are you unwilling to do that? Yeah, and I, I think from my point of view, there isn't any such thing as can't. Right. It means that I am not willing to change this thing or this obstacle looks too big or I'm taking other people in consideration or something like right. that because people have done phenomenal things that looked like they right. were impossible. I look at can't as being, I don't have the skill set yet to do that. Mm -hmm. You might not be able to right now at this moment in time, but you can get the skill to do that. You Absolutely. Know? So I just look at can't as just saying uh, I'm not capable right now. Right. But but that can happen. But that could change, right. What are the other th um, things that people are presenting to you, not just about money, but what are the major trends right now of clients coming to you? Um, a lot of clients, like I said, are spiritual seekers. So they're, they're okay. looking to see what um, their purpose is. I get a lot of that. Okay. Um, in terms of people who are um, practitioners, like I said earlier, you know, about wanting to grow their businesses. Mm -hmm. I had one client who came to me. And her sole reason for coming to me is that she just really wanted to create a space in her life where she was making more time for herself. So, again, it just depends on the person. I mean, I yeah. see all sorts of things with people in terms of what it is they want to accomplish. But the majority of my people um, are wanting to work on their businesses. That's the main thing I do. I help mm -hmm. people. I help people leave jobs that they hate and move into work that they love. Um, and want to get paid well for it. That's mm -hmm. usually, that's my ideal client. Does that sound familiar in any way, shape, Yes, or because <laughs> here's the thing, you know, and what it is is I looked at my own experience yeah, because it's exactly and what it is. I patterned that. I said, okay, yeah. this is what I have experience in. How can I help other people with the same challenge? And so that's what I bring to it as I, I use my own personal experiences, yeah. and those are the kinds of people I attract to me. But that's, I, I think that's the whole point that the things we go through in life, especially if we are coaches and I'm also a business coach, are the things that we're going to be able to teach other people because we've been there. We know it intimately. Right. Exactly. And you talked before about mentors. Will you talk about that again and tell us, you know, if you think that they're important in business life or what your take I, on? I think that, is. that everybody should have a mentor. For whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. Okay. Because here's the thing about the person who's the mentor. The person who's the mentor has already done it and has done it successfully. And so I believe that we should be uh, in relationship with people who uh, 
have accomplished what it is that we want to accomplish yeah. and done it well um, because they, they become the role model. They, they, uh, they create the pattern or the blueprint for us to follow. Right. So, you know, um, it's very, very important. And it's like you can't, you can't talk about being a successful business person if you're not around successful business people. Absolutely. Absolutely. And always to hang out with people who are way above you in accomplishment yeah, because I, that's the only way you're going to grow. Right. I always say I want to be surrounded by people who are one step ahead of me. Yeah. You know, so I know, okay, this is where I could be. This is where I want to go, you know. So I think having a mentor is very, very important. And here's the thing. Mentorship can come in various forms. I have not always had a physical mentor. Sometimes I've read books by people who are either one step or light years ahead of me. Right. And I, I've benefited from that. Um, who do you read? Who do you like oh, to read about that? Oh, you know, my, Brian Tracy is a wonderful person to read. Um, one book by him, it was um, Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life. Absolutely loved it. To loved look at that it. one. Um, mm-hmm. Zig Ziglar. Oh, of course, Is yeah. a great guy. Yeah. Um, Tony Robbins, mm-hmm. because, you know, he's he's considered the master life coach. So I was like, I want to be inspired by him. Yep. Um, a person who is really, really has caught my attention these days is Ian Van Zant. She yes. is a spiritual um, life coach. Um, mm-hmm. She is a relationship expert. Um, and so I, I just am fascinated with her work, and I'm just a huge admirer. Um, and so we have kind of con- uh, had a conversation briefly through email. That was a conversation I will treasure. I bet. Um, but she is right now, she's like my main inspiration. So, And she's so real. And she's she's lost everything and then bounced back. And those yeah. are very powerful people to be around. And yeah, because here's the thing, too. You want to see people who, who struggled. You want to see people yeah. who may necessarily, who failed and, and, and rose again. Because nine times out of ten, we live in a world in terms of businesses that not all businesses succeed. So if right. you're going to go into business, you want to have the, at least the awareness of in case I fail, I know I can get right. back up and dust myself off and do it again. Yeah. But I think there's also another way um, that I'm beginning to look at it, and that is that, quotes, failure is part of business. It's right. just how it goes. People, Things go in waves, and sometimes something collapses, and then it leads to something else. And you have to expect it. If you're an entrepreneur, that has to be part of right. it. I, call fa- I, don't, I don't call them failures. I call them opportunities for growth Absolutely. or um, learning opportunities because there's no such thing as a failure. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's what stops people from doing things so many times. And and you've just got to go for it. It doesn't make any difference if you fall on your face because you'll learn something, you'll get up and you'll do it better or you'll do something different right. that even is even more exciting to you. Absolutely. Okay, so the, here's the question. Uh-oh. Do you have a business plan? I do. Okay, I go do, for it. I do because I listen to the show quite often and I hear you <laughs> ask this question and 9 out of 10 people say they don't have one. Right. But here's the thing. When I started my work with the Dreams in Tarot, I didn't have a plan because it was just you something can't. I did on the side. You can't. But when I, when I decided that it was going to be a business, I decided I needed to have a business plan. But what I did was I uh, created a one page business plan. Okay. So mine is very, very brief, very, very to the point. Um, as, as time goes on and the business evolves to whatever it's going to become, I probably will look into the idea of a formal business plan, but I was kind of a little intimidated with the idea of creating a formal business plan. Yeah. And also too, I was a sole pr- proprietor. That's my, my model. I'm right. moving into an LLC now. But when I started, I was a sole proprietor, and I'm a solopreneur, so I thought I didn't really have any investors, and I didn't go to the banks to get money. So um, I really didn't feel like I needed a formal business plan that was like 50 pages long. Right, and you don't, and you don't, and it it wouldn't make any sense. It'd have to keep saying the same thing over and over again for 50 pages. Yeah, so mine's one page, and it's very, very brief, and it's very to the point. Yeah, and a lot of people just have a vision plan. They know where they want to go, and because it's a a business, uh, when you're an entrepreneur, is always evolving, you can't nail it down. You can see a direction and have it open up, but you have to be extremely clear about what you want. Right. And, you know, here's the thing. You know, as we uh, we are people, so, you know, we're going to grow and evolve. And so as, sure. a, as we grow and evolve, our businesses are going to grow and evolve because as we change, the business will change. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what do you see as the future for your business as you think about it right now? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I'm working on writing. So, you know, I want to incorporate books 
into what it is that I do. So, okay. you know, I see that. Wait, but, wait a minute. What do you want to write? Uh, I, I, I have on the back burner, I've had a book on dream work that, you know, has been Ooh. kind of on a slow simmer yeah. <laughs> on, on, on the pot, on the back of the stove. Is the so heat I, getting turned up? Uh, it is a little bit. You know, what I also, too, when I started my business, I was still doing my grad work. So, you know, that kind of was at the forefront. But now, since I sure. have gotten my degree, that kind of has created a little more time where I can revisit that. Right. But I also wanted to do a book on um, career, finding what the perfect career is and using how dreams can play a part in it, how Tarot can play a part in that. Um, part of what I do with my career work is I look at people's numbers in their date of birth and yeah. kind of come up with an idea based on that information. See, of, of the two you just mentioned, this is hot. This yeah. one is really hot. Um, I love this. And so based on that, how their information from their date of birth can be the pathway to finding what it is that their perfect sure. work is in this world to do. Sure. Okay. So what else do you see? Do you see this always as um, just you doing this? Are you going to train other people to do it? What do, what do you see? I haven't had the vision of being another person who does like training and certification of other coaches. Right. Because there's a lot of people out there who do that. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of really like the idea of working by myself. Now, I have not gotten to the point in my business where I need a, a virtual assistant or a secretary. Um, if it gets to that point where I need somebody to handle those kinds of affairs, maybe right. one or two people to do that. But I like the idea of doing as much as I can by myself. Yeah. Um, so... But, you know, I'm kind of just keeping it open. I, I've always been, you know, tapped into whatever the universe has for me in terms of whatever it is I'm supposed to be doing, how that's supposed to look. So I, even though I may have an idea or some I, some idea of what I want it to look like, I still keep myself open to, like, this or something better. Because, you know, the universe knows better than me what it wants me to do and yeah. how it wants me to do it. And you're part of the universe, and it communicates with you all the time, Absolutely. obviously. I'm always paying attention to life, so I, I love let it. life show up. I love it. Okay, so what makes an entrepreneur successful? Um, I think it's having a vision, okay. um, being committed to that vision, and also, too, being flexible and adaptable because that vision may change. Um, not just be so rigid that it has to be this way. You know, right. be open to that. Um, commitment is huge. Um, being disciplined, yeah. Uh, you know, because I'm, I'm talking from my own experience, being disciplined uh, goes a long, long way. Um, and I really think that I call them the four no's, and that's K N O W S. Okay. You know, the first thing for me is about knowing who you are. Okay. That's the biggest thing. Sure. Second thing would be knowing who your clients or customers are. Um, third thing is knowing your products or your services because you have to be able to communicate what it is that you do and how you do it. Right. And I think it's it's much more challenging when it's a service-based business versus a product because oh. um, those are two entirely different conversations. Totally different. And so you have to be able to know that if you're, ha if you're selling a product, how can you language that? If you're selling a service, how do you language that? Sure. And then the fourth thing is about just knowing what your business is. But they all collectively work hand in hand. But my... I always go back to number one is like knowing who you are is the biggest thing yep. in business. Yep. Because as especially as an entrepreneur, your business is going to be you, a reflection of aspects of yourself that you kind of put together in a cohesive way. What makes a business successful? Again, I think commitment, um, discipline, hard work. Um, it is hard work. Um, you'll probably work harder in your own business than you ever did working for someone else. And I think a lot of people need to understand that. Yeah. Um, I think those are the, those are the things I would really say from my own experience, uh, the hard work part, but it, it, it's, it's work, it's hard work. It seems on the surface, but it's really not when you're doing what it is that you love to do. Mm -hmm. It's not really work. Um, and that's my experience. I, I remember saying uh, to people, I posted this on my Facebook page, <laughs> that um, you know you love what you do when you, you love doing an Excel spreadsheet. Okay, th count me out on that. I don't, I don't like the Excel spreadsheet. Uh, I like the rest of it, but, but not that. But here, in terms of my own business, yeah. I love every facet of it. There's something, there's not anything that I do in my business that I go, oh, I don't want to do that part. Yeah. I love every single part of it, all of it. Yeah. And that's it. The other thing I think that people don't understand, especially people who have a job, and when they're talking to an entrepreneur, they think that you kind of sit around and you have a great time. But the kind of 
incredible creative energy and focus that it takes to create your own business. I mean, that is enormous, and that takes a lot of energy. Yeah, and it's funny you should say that because one of the one of the challenges I've had uh, in, in terms of being an entrepreneur is that people think that, you know, because I work from home primarily, yeah. Yeah. so when people think that you're home, they don't think that you're working. You know, I have people <laughs> call me and they say, well, what are you doing? And I'm like, well, I'm working, you know, and I think I had to really, really kind of help people understand that sure. just because I'm home all day doesn't mean I'm not doing anything, you know, because, yeah. and those people are people who go out into the world and work for someone else. So they think that if you're right. home, you're not doing anything. So when people call me and say, well, Hey, let's go out and do this or let's go out and like, no, I have work to do. Yeah. I'm, it's a work I'm home day. working, right. It's a work day. Yeah. And so that's the other thing. It's, um, setting a structure, you know, making sure that you're disciplined in your, in your scheduling and your structure. Right. Your, so, you know, I'm like, I'm up at seven. I'm in my home office by nine. I work until six or seven, depending on the day and what's right. going on. And sometimes I work longer than that, depending on the needs of my clients, because there are people who work all day and then sure. they want to have their coaching done at night. So, I, you know, I have to kind of be adjustable to the needs of my clients. Sure. And I was impressed. We talked um, last week and you told me that you have certain days that you see clients and all yes. that stuff. You're very disciplined about that. Yeah. And that was, a, and I have grad school to thank for that because it took away a lot of the things in my life that I allowed to distract me. Yeah. Uh, so what it did was um, I created a, a day by day calendar you know i took from sunday from saturday and i said okay and i blocked off certain days for certain tasks and right. that's a, that helps um reduce a sense of overwhelm and feeling yeah. like i have so much to do uh because i used to have a story in my head that i'm always so busy and i always have so much going on and i don't have enough time for things you're, you're talking about me wait a minute right? but i i ha- and i realized i have just as many hours as anybody else it's what sure. i choose to do because yeah. time is like money we talked about money before sure T- we do two things with time we either invest it or we spend it Right. So, you know, and so what are we investing our time in and what are we spending our time on? Yeah. So I had to make some different changes. I had to make some different choices. Yeah. So, but yeah, there are certain days I have that I'm, that are days for seeing clients. There's a day that I work on the books, doing the, the, the finances, you know, balancing the checkbooks and all that kind of stuff and looking at all the financial aspects of the business. There are days where I work on my social media and my yeah. blogging. Um, and I set time aside for that. You know, it just depends. But each each day is focused on a different task. This way I, I kind yeah. of eliminate the overwhelm part of that. I thought that was phenomenal. It doesn't fit with my personality. I could not do that. <laughs> because, but I admire that. It yeah. just it just made perfect sense. And I wish that I could do that, but not so much. So what else do you want to tell listening entrepreneurs, budding entrepreneurs? Um, if you have an idea for a business um, and you love it, you need to step out and do it. Um, don't wait. Don't think that you don't have the skill. Yeah. But, you know, because a lot of people will hold off thinking that they need to get credentials or they need to get training or they need to have a certain skill set. You know, sometimes the best way to do it is just to go out and do it. You know, and you'll learn as you go along. A lot of the things yeah. that I've learned has just been from trial and error. Yeah. You know, but I never stopped myself by saying I can't do it. You know, I just said I may not be able to do it, but I can learn how to do it. And sometimes you have to – I call it learning on the job. Oh, absolutely. You know, just like we go out into the corporate world when we're working for other people and they train us to do what it is they need to do on the job. It's the same thing when you're working for yourself. You learn on the job. Yeah. And you're learning every single day because there's always something that's going to come up. Right. And you're it. There isn't anybody else to turn to and, and say, well, how do I do this and, and what happens now? It's like you're it. You right. may have to call somebody else about it. But sure. But you're it. But the information is always available. It may be through the Internet. It may be through another person. You know, but the information is always out there. If you put the question out there like, I need to know this, you'll get the answer. It'll it'll come to you. Yep. But I think that goes back to the whole intuitive thing and that we are so connected to universal intelligence or whatever you want to call it. But all the information exists and is out there. And when we make an intention – that we need that, it will come. Somebody will call us, a book will show up. Uh, I mean, that thing of books falling off the shelf at you right. and things like that. Or somebody will come and say something to you, and then another person will say the same thing, and another person will show up and say the same thing. Right. So that's that connection yeah. that we have. And I like the, the fact that you talked about intention. So this is the parting thought I want to leave with people. Sure. Um, if you're going to call yourself an entrepreneur and set that intention, then you are an entrepreneur, and you need to do everything that in your life that reflects what that is for you and so you 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 live an entrepreneurial lifestyle you know what what in your life has to change in order to help you believe 
and accept right. the fact that you're an entrepreneur now. So what's an entrepreneurial lifestyle? I just want to ask you that It question. depends on the person. I think it's an individual thing. I can only talk about for me. For me, it's about going out and serving the world, doing what it is that I love to do. Right. And being paid well for it because, truth be told, it's a business. You know, so you can only have a business if you're making money. Yeah. And money is not a dirty word. Money we, is not a dirty word. We gotta change that whole Absolutely concept. Not. I think if we're if we're called to do certain work, we should be paid and paid well for it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that. James, thank you so much. I, I always enjoy my personal conversations <laughs> with you. Now I'm enjoying this on air conversation with you and you've said some really important things for well, people. Thank you, Diane. I just want to say I, I listen to the show every week and so I just oh. love it and I love what you do. I love the platform that you're setting out for people to encourage them to do their own thing. There is nothing that can't be turned into a business if you believe that it's a viable business. You got it. And we need one more thing from you. How can people find you? Give okay. us your information. They can contact me. Um, they can call me directly. My number is area code 843 708 My website is www.life-plan-coach.com. And you can check me out on Facebook. I have a Facebook page. It's facebook.com forward slash life plan coaching. That's all one word. Perfect. All right. And stay tuned because James is off and running. <laughs> so I want to remind listeners again that as a small business owner, you can have access to top attorneys at a low monthly fee for advice, contract review, debt collection, assistance for the IRS, whatever you need. So listen in next Monday from 6 to 7 p.m. on It's Your Business at Beautiful Kinetic Hi-Fi, when my guests will be, guess what, Boyd Stowe and Brad Cooper, the two that created Kinetic Hi-Fi, this wonderful thing. So you will find out what went on behind the scenes, how it came to being. So this is Diane Shaver saying thanks for listening and reminding you that if it's your passion, it's your business.